director. It's always the question, sort of, when a movie is adapted from a book, you know, how true are you going to remain to the source material? And some, you know, take like The Walking Dead, which really veers very, very far away, and then you have some Harry Potter, which stays closer. What was it like when you first decided, when you took it on, in terms of deciding, well, we might make some changes here, but we also want to make sure we keep this really true? Well, the uh, source material is pretty great. You know, there wasn't, we didn't need to change uh, anything, really. I think what was uh, the hardest part was to compress it down to a reasonable movie length and making the choices of what to keep and what not to keep and how could we make shortcuts and still have a consistent story even though we have to take some things out. But it was great that, you know, I was working closely with Cassandra on a, uh, on a lot of it and um, she was very helpful. So it was a uh, smooth sailing. Uh, Cassandra, as you are rehydrating there, up here on the Comic Con stage, it's important. It's been a long day. A lot of interviews, a lot of signings. But then, you know, Harold just talked about that. Some some writers, when their films are adapted for movies or TV, someone people are very involved. Some people don't want to be involved. Some people are sort of somewhat. Where, where was your sort of role here? I, I wanted to be involved. I was pretty interfering. Um, you know, they they were like, "Would you like to be involved in casting?" And I was like, "Like." <laughs> I like a golden plate Ferrari, yes, I would like to be involved. I would like to be involved with everything, so there really was almost nothing where I didn't bug Harold about the costumes or the sets or the casting or the story at one level or another. Um, and I really, I mean, uh, it was a very sort of weird process because he was sort of introducing me to how you make a movie, and I was talking to him about, you know, the stories and where they went in the future and how things. In, this movie would affect the story down the road, and it was very collaborative. Uh, Jamie. Hello. Hello. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> <Woo! laughs> <laughs> you are an inherited bastard, sir. Thank you, you very much. Thank bastard. you so much. I'm talking about your character. Oh, right. And you. <laughs> no, your character. <laughs> uh, Jace is pretty arrogant in the books. He's a guy who has a definite attitude, so he's walking around with a tune. Uh, he's thrown a little tube off over at Clary. I mean, how much of that's going to translate on screen what we see from him in the books? Yeah, I played him as a sassy bitch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I mean, I think in the books, you know, obviously we have the, you have the availability to explore a character over, you know, hundreds of pages, you know, with the, with the movie we, we have to condense that. Um, and what stuck out for me about Jace was this vulnerability that he has, and I've said this a lot, but it's true, so I'll say it again. Um, <laughs> So he has this vulnerability about him, and that's why he sort of puts on this facade of this cockiness or this self-awareness, this self-assuredness, and he lets that down. He lets his guard down with Lily, I mean, <laughs> with Clary. Jeez. <laughs> with Clary. And, um, and so, uh, you know, it, it, for him, that's, that's, his, that's, that's his bag. And I did, I made him really grumpy quite a lot of the time. But he needed to be grumpy in order for you to feel for him later on in the story. Um, Robert, you have some experience oh with sort of supernatural projects. Woo! Woo! Yeah! yeah! This guy knows the mortality. He might take my shirt off. Woo! Yeah! <laughs> That's right, you know immortality from the mystery, so how does sort of the downworlders here differ from the characters uh, in that show? Well, I mean, in the, in the characters in Misfits, uh, when they all get cursed with these superpowers, they, the, the superpowers were more like extensions of their own insecurity. You know, so they, they came very much from within them, whereas the downworlder characters are, are kind of part demon, part human. They're a mix of the two, and they've learned to live peacefully with people, and so they've... Um, so, yeah, so the, the, the superpowers of the... Uh, the demonic aspects of the characters in Mortal Instruments differ greatly. Uh, Kevin? Uh-huh. We, uh, <laughs> we, we learn a lot about your character, Alec, throughout the books. A lot of stuff happens with him, a lot of good stuff, some not so good stuff. Um, how much did you peek ahead and sort of see what happens later? And if you did peek ahead because you're a good cheater, how did you either include... <laughs> 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 Ahead, you know. yeah. You're about to read it, but how much, but how much do you sort of include or exclude that stuff that what you know when playing him for this movie, from this book? Well, I mean, I think we all were on the same page, which, you know, the, the main focus when we, when I, when I spoke to Harold was, you know, we were making, we were making one film, so uh, in order, you can 
start and it can really inhibit your ability to, you know, you can get ahead of yourself and, and reveal things that are not meant to be revealed until much later. And, you know, fortunately, like, it's not like we're going to be able to make uh, at least one more of these. So, um, but, you know, I, 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 I tried at least to just sort of, you know, you try to create a character. And, and uh, not look too far ahead and not make any assumptions about him. I mean, there's uh, the obvious uh, thing with his sexuality, and, and obviously that's revealed throughout the, the series of the novels, but, um, you know, that was something I considered, but it, it wasn't something that we, uh, you know, it, we were just making a movie. We tried not to get too overwhelmed with the expectation of the entire series, and, you know, just started off by telling it, telling a great story. And I, I, I love the character of Alex. I remember the script, I really felt uh, an affinity towards him. And, and it was, especially for a, a film of this sort of magnitude, I, I was super impressed that there was, that the casting was able to write a character that had all this stuff going on. And, uh, and then he's still, you know, he's still kind of a badass. Yeah. yeah. Godfrey Gow, let's talk to the High Warlock in Brooklyn for a second. <laughs> yes. He took his pants off. Welcome to my party. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was going to say, how do the parties at Comic-Con measure up? Because you know a good party when you, when you see one or throw one in these days. Yeah, this is definitely, you know, Magnus Bane's caliber. <laughs> all, all these people here. It's crazy. Woo! And uh, Magnus Bane's party, Cassie, might we see a little cameo uh, from you uh, at Magnus' party in this film? I think I made it in. I'm a, I was a demon at Magnus' party, and I had these metal cat ears that were attached to my head. And uh, it was like a night shoot, so they were there for like... 10 to 4 in the morning, and I left, got straight on the plane going home. Couldn't get the ears off. They were like welded to my head. So I had to go through the metal detector in the Toronto airport, and they were like, Yeah, you keep setting off the detector. And I was like, My ears are not detachable. <laughs> so they tend to take me to the special room where they pat you down and then like x ray, they x ray my ears. But, but I am in the movie. <laughs> Harold didn't cut you out? I don't think no. so. How did you come out? I insisted on having her in the movie. I thought you should be in Magnus Bane's party where you're amongst your own creatures. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, she's in there and uh, she's doing a great job. I didn't, there was no reason to cut her out. It's great to have her there. Um, we're going to get some audience questions in just a minute. So if you're thinking about that, I'm going to start to think about what you want to ask the, uh, the cast and uh, create a force line of answers. But all this talk about the movie is great. But talk is cheap, people, because why I sit here and talk about the movie when we can watch part of the movie? Would you guys like to people? See a clip from the film? Yeah! Right. In this scene, in this scene, we're going to see Clary attempting to uh, get some answers out of Jace. Uh, as to these strange things she keeps seeing while her mother, played by Alana Giddy, deals with some unwelcome visitors at home. Nobody has seen this yet. You are the first ones anywhere. Here it is, an exclusive first look at the Mortal Instruments, City of Bones. Check the screen. Woo! Woo! 